Dad's Rap. Hey guys, on today's mini episode of the Dad's Rap podcast, I'm going to touch on the subject of fears about the gym, fears about fitness, and fears about eating healthy. I posed a question on my Facebook page yesterday, got some really great feedback, and I'm just going to address that. So, without further ado, um, I have to let you guys know that due to copyright issues, I'm not allowed to use my theme song anymore. So basically, what I'm going to be doing is singing it for you. This is going to play well on a podcast, I know. And basically, every every episode, I'm going to do a different type of singing. So for today, we're going to go country. <clears throat> I've been working Monday to Sunday. I swear I'm going to make it someday. And I've been working Monday to Sunday. I swear I'm going to make it someday. And this is for when I do This one's a victory Oh This one's a victory Victory This one's a victory Oh This one's a victory Hey What's up? Put a little Valentine's prank on you guys No copyright issues here Nobody wants to hear me sing uh, Really, really, really country style versions of songs maybe next time i'll change it up and do like an auto tune um i don't know but thanks for tuning in um thanks for downloading thanks for streaming whatever it is you guys are doing i really appreciate it um don't forget follow me on twitter at dad's rap podcast i also have a blog uh wordpress.com working on a website to tie it all together um you can follow me on instagram at j-a-h S H L O T T. That's at Josh Lot. I know. Um, it's early in the morning, and uh, I got a lot of birds chirping and just weird sounds going on around me. So just imagine that I'm recording this outdoors in the serenity of God's beauty, the master's paintbrush. Mm. So, what I'm touching on today is a question I posed on my Facebook page. Um, asking if anyone had any fears about going to the gym or starting any kind of exercise routine or just like adopting any healthy eating habits. I didn't get a lot of feedback on the eating habits part, but mostly um, it was all about going to the gym. Most people um, said it caused like some form of anxiety. Now, I could tell you from my experiences, I've been going to the gym for four years what's it's 2019 oh my gosh uh probably almost six years now and i still have anxiety there are still days when i pull up to the gym and it's packed and i'm like nope not going in there so i either skip my workout entirely which is a bad call or i find alternate ways to do that um but yeah i still deal with anxiety i have a lot of social anxiety um, I'm going to do a podcast episode later on mental health and depression and anxiety. And uh, just to give you a little bit of my social anxiety, still, when my wife and I go to a movie theater, um, I can't walk in first. Now, I've gotten better the the more I've worked on my mental health, but uh, the, it, it helps so much now at Tinseltown in Beaumont that your seats are predetermined and you don't have to spend forever looking for a seat. That's like a game changer. What I wish they would do is adopt the uh, IMAX system, which is the entrance is at at the top, at the back. That way you don't have to walk in in front of anybody. That's the old Pines Theater entrance. You're walking in and nobody even knows you're there. That's amazing. That's what I want. But yeah, I can't do that. So I don't like large groups of people. I struggle around large groups of people unless I've on copious amounts of caffeine. Um, Almost said cocaine there. I don't know why. Um, I had a couple of people say, uh, and by the way, most of the responses were from women, which I get my, you know, my, and my wife said something like, it's very difficult to work out at a gym, you know, where the free weights is mostly guys. And I can't understand that kind of anxiety because I don't get that. You know, I don't care if the guy next to me is lifting, 40 pounds heavier than me, um, with his, uh, with his dumbbells. It doesn't matter. I don't care. That kind of stuff doesn't bother me. I know why I'm there and that doesn't bother me, but 
my wife has expressed to me that for women, it's it's not even that it's intimidating. I don't think. I think it's just annoying. Like this this bro lifestyle that people have adopted. Like I get it. I actually have a book called The Swoley Bible, um, <laughs> which is funny. It's a very sarcastic take on uh, just the gym and terms that we use in the gym and things like that. But um, that kind of lifestyle is is <laughs> it's it can be annoying. I, I understand that. Um, bros, dudes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they're all in the gym and it, and it can be annoying. It can be intimidating. Um, people looking at you weird, like, what are you doing? And I know you're in your head, but here's what I'll tell you about this. Here's some little bit of motivation that I learned. Um, take a scale of one to 10 in your head and pick a number about how much you think about yourself. So, and I don't mean that in a selfish way. I mean, how much you're constantly worried about, uh, your appearance or how you come off to other people. So let's say I'm an eight. You take that number and you subtract three from it. And that's what other people are thinking about you. So, I mean, if you're kind of, if you're like a six, other people are going to be thinking about you at three, because I can tell you that people are worried about themselves in general. There are the weird people like me. I'm a people watcher. I could watch people all day because it's interesting. But for the most part, people are worried about themselves. And look at that. I'm a people watcher and I watch other people, but I'm still mostly worried about myself. I care about my self image. Like that's what I'm focused on. So whatever you're thinking about yourself, you got to scale it back quite a bit. And that's how much other people are actually paying attention to you. Um, I saw a couple of people having things about not having a plan when they go in. That, that's another big deal. Now I don't want to give myself a plug here, but if anyone is needing help with plans, eating, you know, eating routines, eating habits, um, just workout ideas, I am scheduled to take my personal trainer certification test at the 1st of April. Anybody needs me, yo, I'm here. I'll give whatever advice I can. Um, but as far as making a plan, I get that. You know, I've gotten to the point now in my workouts where I can just go in and I know what muscle group I'm doing. So I'm doing chest that day in the middle of my, you know, if I'm doing bench in the middle of that, I can be like, okay, well, I'm going to, I can like kind of plan out what I'm going to do next. Now it's a little iffy when the machine that I got my eye on, somebody else comes and gets it. I don't like that. So a lot of times the more items you bring to the gym, and this is annoying for some people, but the more items you bring, those are called machine holders. You got some wraps, you got a towel, you have your phone. Man, you could just put those certain places. You got a water bottle. Hey, this is my machine. Don't touch. Back off. Myspace.com. Some people, um, one person in particular talked about like having to have a routine like I was talking about, but especially um, the time of day and what you're going to eat afterwards. That's super important. Um, if you have a home gym that you go to, it's really important to and, and, and also, if you have a schedule that is set, like within your day, it's especially important to know when the peak hours of your gym is. So like for my gym, nine o'clock in the morning is going to be packed. There's going to be um, a lot of uh, stay at home moms there. Um, and that's just a generalization because I'm guessing it's nine o'clock in the, in the morning or, um, you know, there, I see a lot of shift workers there who might be off. I, I work with a couple guys who uh, go there. So I see them at the same time I'm off. Um, and then if you go early, so I go I wake up at when I work days, I wake up at three 30 and go um, in the morning. If you go that early, it's shift workers, basically um, people who are trying to get that work in work out in before work. You hit there about six, you got teachers or people who are going to, uh, and an, a nine to five job or an eight to five job or something like that. Normal, normal hour people, uh, you go at like 11 or 12, you're hitting the lunch crowd. People are trying to get a workout in at lunch. There's a, there's a, a sweet spot in there from about one to three where there's like nobody there. Uh, seven o'clock in the morning, it's pretty empty. Uh, once you hit about three o'clock though, you're starting to get into the after school crowd. So high school kids are starting to get out and come in and work in, in groups, which is the most annoying thing in the world. Um, but they're getting in there, you know, they're getting their huge pumps in. And then later, I mean, 530, 5 o'clock, 435 o'clock is not that bad because you're getting in there before the, the work rush. 
But then after that, it's a free for all. There's no way I'm going after about five o'clock at all. Uh, as far as preparing what you, you, your meals afterwards, yeah, that's a huge thing. Uh, because a lot of times if I don't have a, if I don't have a plan, what I'm going to eat afterwards, that drive home, if you've ever seen Zoolander where, uh, Derek Zoolander is trying to kill the prime minister of Malaysia, and this is ridiculous, but think, think with me here. And he's walking down the runway and the, the, the prime minister is at the end and he's got all these stars on the sides, like pointing at him, like, like, like screaming at him. That is, and, and it's just a distraction. He needs to kill the prime minister. Okay. If my house is the prime minister of Malaysia and that drive home is the runway, Whataburger, Jack in the Box, Sonic, all these donut shops, those are those distractions on the side of the runway. And you just got to put your head down and go. Now, don't literally put your head down, pay attention to the road, but you just got to go through. It's always very important to have a plan with that because I know that that is a, that's a huge, huge deal. I saw a couple more things about um, just maybe doing the wrong workout or scared that you're doing it wrong. Um, that, that's a really good one because, you know, I've been doing stuff for a really long time. And if you do any kind of research on it, you'll find that there's a proper way to do something. But a lot of times there, there are a couple right ways to do it. Like there's different variations you can do. Uh, the big thing is you don't want to do the wrong thing because you don't want to hurt yourself. One, you don't want to look stupid, you know, but two, you don't want to hurt yourself. So my thing is before you go to the gym, if you have a plan and whatever kind of time you have, look, if you're like today, I'm working out shoulders. So if you're doing shoulders, look at your workout and Google shoulder workouts. Now, whatever you're doing it for, are you doing it for size are you doing it for strength? Um, are you, you just want to get a little more definition in your shoulders. What are you doing it for? So look up uh, shoulder workout for definition. You can find uh, videos on that, and, and it'll just help you through it. And, hey, I've seen people with their iPads. I'm not saying bring an iPad to the gym, but I've seen people with their iPads out watching videos at the gym. If there's, an, if, if there's not a lot of people there and you don't have like a lot of people waiting in line for your machine, look at your phone and, and watch someone, watch a professional do a workout that you're doing and try to mimic that. that and, and that will help you, A, feel more confident, and B, you can do it safer because um, that's the big thing. You know, a lot of people get worried, get into their selves about um, how they look and, and how they might look dumb or whatever. And I get that. I do things all the time and I feel like my form is okay. It's pretty good. Uh, but I still get into my head. Like, am I doing this right? And is this guy over here that is jacked? Is he looking at me like, dude, you're an idiot. Probably not because he's probably a normal dude who has worked hard for a really long time and he's worried about himself. Um, and, and, and that's, that, that's the thing always to remember is that people are thinking about themselves mostly. Um, like I said before, but just for your safety, I would say do research before you go to the gym. Somebody said that uh, running on a treadmill makes them uncomfortable. Dude, hey amen. Um, 90% of the people I talk to about that will tell, will tell you that they hate running on the treadmill at the gym. I don't, I don't like doing it, especially if I ever forget my headphones and for some, I mean, that's like the, man, that's the worst. So if I ever forget my headphones, there's no way I'm running on a treadmill at the gym because I sound like, you know, King Kong running down the streets of Tokyo. Like it's, it's terrible. There's some pounding going on on that treadmill. I'm sorry if that sounded sexual. That did not mean to come off like that, but it, it is loud. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. However, and everybody's got their headphones on. Nobody can hear you. Let's be real. The only people that don't have headphones are really old people, basically, or idiots like me who forget theirs. And let's be real. That doesn't matter anyway. So don't be scared of uh, running on the treadmill. Um, or don't be afraid to, or don't let it get in your feelings. Cause it, 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 it still bothers me. I've been doing it for a long time. Um, feeling uncomfortable in your, in your clothes or whatever. Look that I feel, I feel you look, I feel super uncomfortable in gym clothes. That's why a lot of times it really depends, you know, to me, and, and this is going to sound weird, but whatever workout you're doing, you dress for that occasion. So if I'm doing an arm workout, if I'm doing biceps or something, I'll wear like a loose cutoff. I mean, it'll be good on me. If, I, if I'm wearing something like full, full disclosure, complete transparency here, my love handles are the worst part of my body other than my nose, but I can't work on that. But my love handles are the worst part of my body. I hate them. I wish I could just cut them off. Gone. They're my hate handles. Cannot stand them. Generally, 
um, in men, it's the last thing to go when you lose weight. You're, and it's all about cardio and it's all about, uh, working on your core. So mostly about cardio though. Um, it, it's just going to melt away. So that is the, that is my problem area. Can't stand it. And I know that when I sit down, it's very prominent. So if I know I'm doing workouts that are going to cause me to be seated or laying or laying down on a bench or something like that, I'm not going to wear a super tight shirt. I'm going to wear something loose because I want to feel comfortable. That's another thing. You got to feel comfortable when you go to the gym. If you feel uncomfortable, you're going to be in your head and it's going to get to you. It's going to cause you to, to mess up your workout and to not get a good one in. I know from experience because it happens to me at least once a week. And I feel like I've got my gym routine down uh, pretty well. So that that's a huge thing is that, look, dress for um, whatever workout you're going to do. And um, last thing I'm going to hit on here, um, as far as eating healthy, it's hard. It, it, the, every, every prospect, every, every part of eating healthy is difficult. It's difficult to start. It's difficult to keep going. It's difficult to throw a cheat meal in there and then to pick it back up. It is hard and it's mental. And and a lot of people don't know how hard it is. Like if you've gone through it and you're still going through it, you know, this is a tough, this is a tough thing to accomplish. Like it, and a, a lot of it, I mean, there's so much to it. Look, we live in the South. Uh, there's food pushers galore down here. Um, you know, you go to a, a family cookout and there's so much bad food um, and they're like, hey, have some. You're like, no, 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 it's OK. It's OK. And here's here's a problem I've, I've noticed. Like you don't want to be the guy or be the girl. Just be the person that is like, no, no, I'm eating healthy. I'm on I'm on a, a eating plan. Right. So you don't say that. But what you say is somebody offers you food. and You're like, oh, nothing. Some good. I either already ate or not already. You know, I got something over here or whatever. And then they're, they push it again. They're like, no, come on, have some. And like, no, no, I can't. They're like, no. So then you got to just break out and be like, look, I'm on a, I'm on a, I'm on an eating plan right now. So then you have to be that person. And then they're like, oh, here's a story. I'll tell you, um, my, my father-in-law inadvertently, I think eats, eats keto without even realizing it. He, all he, all he eats is meat. So <laughs> no, he eats vegetables too, but I'm saying this guy is like a red meat all the time. So it's really funny. Like when I started losing weight and, um, uh, I started getting these different diet plans and I started eating differently. We'd go to his house and, uh, we'd have these huge cookouts. We'd have, you know, there'd be meat. I, I cut out red meat for a really long time. Uh, and of course I've picked it back up cause it's delicious, but cut out red meat for a really long time. And, uh, he was like, Josh, you know, you want some steak? I'm like, no, no, I'm, you know, I'm just eating uh chicken, turkey, fish, blah, blah, blah. I have eaten red meat around him for like the past few years to this day when we're going to have a cookout at his house. He tells me what we're going to have. And then he'll say, I mean, I don't know what you can eat. You know, you, you're always eating something. And I'm like, man, I, I haven't been on that eating thing in that long. So listen, that's why it's tough. It's tough because it's a, it's, it's a stigma. We live in the South. We celebrate with food. We celebrate with cake. We celebrate, hey, you've been doing good today. Here's whatever. Oh, Sonny, you made you made an A-plus on your test. Hey, let's go get an ice cream. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that every now and then. But in general, food and emotions are so closely tied. And I, I'm not sure if that's how it is all across the United States, but especially in the South. If you think about it, hey, somebody's birthday, what are we doing? Going out, going out to eat. Hey, after church, we're having a dinner on the ground type situation. Hey, uh, this is going on. A bunch of food. I mean, it's food, 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 and it and it's tough. It's a difficult, um, it, it's a difficult path. Uh, f- uh, healthy food is more expensive. It's, it can be, it can be more time consuming. Personally, I've got it down to uh, like an art. I mean, I could meal prep for the week in about thirty to forty five minutes, and I'm done. Uh, that's super helpful to me that I know how to do that now. But um, thanks, guys, for listening. Uh, this is just a quick little podcast. Hey, I want to also say thank you for listening to the lighthearted Valentine's episode of the podcast about my love life. Uh, I've had a couple of people laugh about that and talk to me about it. Um, hope you got something from it. Hope you laughed. I uh, hope it brought you a little bit of joy. This Friday, I'll be uh, uploading my episode on my entire fitness journey. So if you're interested in hearing me talk about that, uh, that's going to be from start, which is when I was young and struggled with food, uh, to now. 
and it's going to be covering everything that I've dealt with. And it's going to be touching on my gym routine, uh, how I motivate myself, things like that. So listen, if you're wanting to start a fitness journey, if you're wanting to get healthy, if you're wanting to turn your life around, uh, listen to that, hit me up. I got all, I'm full of information. I'm wanting to tell people about it, but I don't want to be the guy who just is coming out and saying, Hey, 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 you know what you need to be doing? Hey, you know what you need to be doing? No, I would like people to ask me about it and I will give them uh, information and give them tips. So don't forget Friday morning, that episode will be live. Um, and once again, thanks for tuning in to this quick little mini podcast. Love you guys. Peace. I'll be working Monday to Sunday. I swear I'm going to make it someday.